So here's our first example. And like I said, this example is given to you in your packet also. So let's consider the idea that P of X is equal to the statement X squared is greater than X. And that scribbling on the right, um, this X and the weird looking E and the R means X is in, so this is a membership symbol, and this means the real numbers. And real numbers are regular numbers, they're basically not imaginary ones. So any decimal number or that you can think of, that's what that is. Okay, so we want to know, is x squared greater than x true for all real numbers? Or is it true for any particular one? So p of 0 actually says what I do is I take that 0 and I put it in for x. And then I have a statement that I can evaluate whether it's true or false, right? So is that true or false? Great, that's false. So p of 1 is going to be 1 squared greater than 1. Is that true or false? False. Two squared greater than two? True. Okay, so we've actually found out that this is sometimes false and sometimes true, right? So I actually have two different ways to write that. So this uh, letter right here means there exists. So the way I read this is there exists an x so that p of x is true. And I can plug in, so I can say there exists an x so that x squared greater than x is true. So since p of x is equal to that, I can substitute in, just like I do in my logic stuff. So if two things are equal, I can substitute one for the other. So is this a weird sentence to say in English? Okay, so any answer is correct there. It is weird for regular people to say when you're standing in the hall talking to them, right? So but it's not weird in a math class, okay? It's not weird in a math class because you've probably seen your professors write these and they probably didn't even bother telling you what it was, <laughs> okay? Um, so you see them in math. It is a weird way to talk in English. What we normally say in English is we use the word some or a. So we have articles that we use for that. So I could say, I know a guy who has a car. Right? That's normal, regular English. But I'm saying the same thing, right? There's a guy that I know that has a car. There exists a guy that Dr. Barnes knows that has a car. Right? So I, I, we have shorthand and we have things that we assume about how people talk. But if I hear A or I hear some, both of them mean there exists or a few. A, some, or a few. Or any. All of those are words that actually mean there exists. So if you hear any of those, then you actually know that if I had to start translating this into predicate calculus, I can actually do it because there exists actually covers almost everything that anybody says. Or the opposite of it covers almost anything that someone would say, right? So earlier in class, we, we figured out that no one drives a Porsche, right? Okay, so can I write that statement with our new quantifier? This is called a quantifier. Can you write the statement, no one drives a Porsche with that? There does not exist a person, X, so that X drives a Porsche, right? So where do I put the not? Before or after the quantifier? Great. It comes before. Okay, so this is, for our previous statement, that is, no one drives a Porsche. 
for our prior values, sorry, of P of X. So I'm glad you guys figured that out. So we're, you, you got to be really careful what the knots are. If the knot were actually in front of the P of X, what would the sentence be? There is a person who doesn't drive a Porsche. That's obviously true, right? So how would I write it in regular English? Well, let's write it in math. There exists a person who does not drive a Porsche. Okay, that's weird, and that would only be on Big Bang Theory, right? Well, that was a delayed reaction, okay. Okay, so there exists a person who does not drive a Porsche. Now, if you were talking with people, you'd probably say, not everybody drives a Porsche, right? That's much more likely for you to say. Like you're talking to somebody, blah, 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 blah. You're like, not everybody drives a Porsche. You would totally hear that, right? Okay, so these two things are equal. But they don't look like they're equal, do they? But there's a knot in there. And remember that tricky knots make things into lies, right? So the opposite of there is a person is not every person. So the opposite of there is is not every. Or not any. So there is a person. Um, who does not drive. So if I have there exists in the not, then that's the same as not everyone. So we're going to look at that some more later. So I just want to introduce that into your brain. And then we're going to do some other math ones. And then we'll come back to the English.